You're watching HuffPost Live, and I'm Nancy Red, and we all know kids say the darndest things. But what can be done when some of those things are racist and sexist? Here to talk with me about preschool prejudice, we have Christine, a sociologist who is also a mother and author of the book Raising Happiness. We have Carla, the managing director of a civil rights coalition. We have Inkechi, an associate producer here at HuffPost Live, and in-house we have Lisa Bell... Uh, duh. Belkin, I was sitting here thinking about you as Emperor Mom. I was going to say, we're like, we become BFFs, and now, I know. now we're so close, we only go by first names. I know. You're like Cher. <laughs> <laughs> when a preschooler is racist, and it's about a four-year-old who has an, uh, a dad wrote in, and he said over the past few weeks, he's made several comments unprompted that he didn't want to say hello to a specific child because he was brown. And what was the father's specific concern about this? The father was concerned about two things. One, because he considers himself for reasons that have to do with the second, extremely, you know, progressive and, and accepting. And here his child was saying things that, that he didn't get from him. Um, and the second is because this child himself was brown. Um, his mother, his, his father was, is Caucasian of European descent. His mother is Indian. Um, and so he really didn't know where this was coming from. So he didn't know whether he had a problem of his own child being racist or whether this was something that his kid was hearing at school that other children were doing to him. The author put racist in quotation marks, so I think she understands that the preschooler cannot actually be a real racist, but is just mimicking what the adults in his life do and say. Do you think, Carla, that a preschooler has the capacity at such an early age to know the power of his or her words? In many cases, preschoolers know at this point between right and wrong. However, I fundamentally do not believe it is appropriate for us to be calling preschoolers racist in any way, shape, or form. That, that's an adult term, and that's a term that we've been um, put, we as adults put values upon. And I don't believe that uh, preschoolers have the ability to be racist. Do you remember as a, as a five-year-old, you had a unique experience that could have been on the other end of the little boy in this article? Yeah. So my first conscious moment of being black was in kindergarten. And I was sitting on the bus, and there's this kid named Eric in front of me in these long curls and this brown hair, uh, and brown eyes, rather. And he said, black face, black face. And so I turned around thinking it was someone else. And the people behind me were looking at me. And that's when I realized, oh my God, I'm different. And that was my first conscious memory of being black. I just remember that being the definite moment when I remember being black. Um, we always grew up in white towns and I never saw myself as different until someone pointed it out to me. Both of my parents were black and my dad's Nigerian. So for him, the race thing doesn't really exist. So for me, it was just a very shocking you know, moment in my in my childhood that I remember forever. Part of childhood is just discovery, whether it's in a way that is a, an offensive situation or it's just figuring out what's going on. Right. I mean, we, we teach them one of these things is not like the other. I and mean, we teach them to notice differences. And of course, they have to learn them developmentally. That's how you sort the world. So our kids are always sorting the world. And one of the ways they sort is by this one looks different than that one. And so, of course, they notice. And I think what's important is whether or not we shut them down and tell them that's not something that we talk about and that's bad and that's wrong, or say, yeah, isn't, isn't it interesting that everybody looks a little bit different? All I can say is my son was about five years old at the time. He went out to dinner. He pointed at the family next to us and yelled, look, Mom and Dad, they're made of chocolate. My wife got upset, but to him it was a good thing. He loves chocolate. The lady sitting next to us laughed and said it was the cutest thing he ever heard. And Christine, you're over there laughing because it's, it's a, it's, it, is a, it is a discovery situation. It is at the time that they are figuring out that there are differences. These are teaching moments. Absolutely. And I think that the most important thing really is that as parents, we talk with our kids about it. So we actually have a, a fair amount of evidence that even really young babies can recognize somebody who is of a different ethnicity than we are. So there is something in there hardwired to recognize differences, but what isn't hardwired 
is to know how to deal with those differences and how to think about them and how to talk about them. So we, this is actually a really hard thing for us to study from a psychological or a sociological perspective because parents tend to be so unwilling to talk about race that they will not participate in a study related to it. It's seen as something kind of secret that we don't talk about, and yet it's so obvious to kids. 